what is the perfect physique? Now, I, I find this really interesting to debate, especially with other men, but also with women as to kind of what everybody sort of looks to or aspires to be like. In 2010, my life completely changed. I'll give you the before and after. But in 2010, I finished a big race in Spain. I looked up at the podium and I saw three guys that were so fit for purpose. I'd never seen three freaks of nature like them before. They were in so skinny upper bodies, but all muscles in the legs, like way beyond any bodybuilder I'd ever seen, like muscles in the calves that I didn't even know existed. And what it said to me was the level of dedication and drive and how important it was to develop the physique as a byproduct of getting in shape to do something. To, and that, that's the key thing, to do something. Rather than to go to a place in order to get in shape to look a certain way, these guys were running really fast times and as a byproduct, they were impressive, physically looked impressive. Growing up in Manchester, of course, you're, you're a product of your, your environment and you kind of, you're in a very primitive state, especially as a teenage boy. And so I got to 16, 17, finished running when I was 16 and I played more team sports, football and rugby. Rugby, I needed to be a bit bigger. And, and so I started in the gym and then I, I got into that gym culture. And when I throw myself into something, it's literally all or nothing. So within a very short space of time, you learn the training principles and you learn how the progressions and you learn sort of, you know, it feels quite good to get that pump. And, um, you know, even to this day, I love doing a really heavy leg session because I like to feel that pump. It feels like progress. But what was funny was once I'd started in the gym, after maybe six, seven, eight months, you could visibly see a difference. And, and that starts, especially sort of 16, 17 years old, you start to become more attractive to women. And then you're, you're then doing it as well as getting fit for the rugby and stronger for the rugby and lifting stronger, bigger weights to improve your rugby. You're also doing it to impress other girls and, and get other girls. And that's sort of, I guess, part and parcel of growing up as a young man, especially in a place like Manchester where it's very showy and, you know, it's very materialistic and it's very kind of like about your physique and about what car you're driving, where you live in, where you're eating, what shoes you've got, what watch you, all these things that you realize later on in life that if you're putting those types of signals out, you're going to attract a certain type of girl. Whereas if you kind of, this is who I am and you you're not kind of putting those things on display, you're going to get to talk to girls who you want to talk to, as opposed to want to talk to you for the things and for the way that you look maybe. And as a competitive person who throws themselves into anything, all of a sudden you start competing with everybody else in the gym. So you want to lift bigger weights than the other guys. And you want to be in, in physically in better shape than other guys as well. So you're literally training, you find yourself training to impress other guys, which is, you know, it starts to get very, very bizarre. And again, all that sacrifice, the eating, the training twice a day is all to impress other people. And you're way past the stage of impressing girls. Like if anything, girls are turned off by it. Or most girls are because it says quite a lot about you. If you're sort of in a shape that's OTT, then you're spending a lot of time in front of the mirror at the gym working on your physique there's only so much you need for rugby and for football and all of a sudden you're spending all this time in order to look better. It's exactly the same for me. If I go into a bar, which I rarely do anymore, but if I go into a bar, girls are competing against girls. And so the fancy shoes with red soles and the handbag that's a thousand dollars and the extensions to the eyelashes, the hair, the facial stuff that goes on, especially in a place like Dubai and Manchester and London, guys don't like that. So girls are actually competing against themselves in order to look in a way that we don't like as guys or most guys that I've ever spoken to don't like. And it's exactly the same for a young boy. We're kind of confused and you're in those early, st early stage, I'm literally talking 16, 17, 18 years old. So you kind of don't know what's going on. You're kind of a product of your environment, but you're being a bit of a sheep. And so you're, you're aspiring to be what you see around you as success, whether it's somebody who you know, looks physically in shape, 
uh, but also the, the material stuff, so the things that money can buy. You're looking at what cars people can drive, where people live, where their apartments are, where they're going to eat dinner, where they're going out for drinks, what watch they've got. You're very sort of you're very green, and you're in a stage of your life where, as I said before, you're confused. And the funny thing is, what I see now is in a place like Dubai, you kind of get to a stage in your life where that's it's kind of like take me or leave me. And I've been through this enough where you, this is me. I'm very very comfortable in myself. I'm very I I, I feel like I, I know. To this at this point, uh, uh, as much about myself as I possibly uh, can, and who I am, and and therefore it's, it, it makes it very easy to make the right connections, whether friendships, relationships, etc. What I see here in Dubai is there's still people posturing, so you'll get sort of 30 to 50 year olds and even more still putting the wrong signals out there, and I see that as them being confused. They are still putting the wrong signals out to guys, you know, 45, 50 year old guys putting signals out to attract a type of girl who's going to be interested in them for the wrong reasons and for short term reasons, probably. And it's not going to work out. So they're putting themselves in a, a really bad spot. And so they're not doing it for themselves. And, and definitely it's not an intrinsic motivation, which whether running or physical shape or if you can be intrinsically motivated by what you're doing, you're going to kill the opposition. There's nobody can compete with you if you're intrinsically motivated. If you're running for the love of running, nobody can stand a chance against you. Uh, and when I found running, everything really quickly made sense. And I remember, you know, as I said, looking up at that podium and seeing three guys at the height of their physical peak and just thinking, fit for purpose. They are doing this because they love running and they love running uphill. And it's not to impress a girl or impress another man, it's to race against another man and to literally test the heart and lungs of you against other guys to see who is the fastest, who has done the most work in order to win that race. For me, that's a complete meritocracy and I can make sense of that. Running makes sense to me. The first person to cross the line wins the race. There's no subjectivity about it. It's not a bodybuilding competition. And so I can't think of another bigger driver than sort of running and the way that that forces you to do the work because you know you're going to get found out if you don't do the work. And it forces you to look after leg day and put yourself in a really powerful position with your glutes, hamstrings. It forces you to have low body fat because it's not conducive of fast performance when you're looking at power to weight all the time. You've got loads of energy all the time. So you're better in your career, you're better in business because nobody can outwork you because you have also all the habits that you've accrued maybe in running or that's just who you were as a person, but it's certainly who you are now. So your ten tenacity, your resilience, your determination, all of that, is together the biggest superpower I can possibly think of. It's not you trying to get on stage and win a trophy for being the fittest person. It's you executing a project and getting the result. And that in itself is incredibly powerful. And physique will be fantastic, but as a byproduct of you winning.